Hello there and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here and you don't know who I am, my name is Michelle Frey and I am a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. It is that time of the year, that unfortunate time of the year, when illness is spreading like crazy. I know personally at my school the flu has been rampant and then now the coronavirus has made its way into Maryland and unfortunately that means teachers need to be prepared with subplans. I get asked constantly how to actually write subplans or how to actually create a sub binder. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through step by step how I actually create my sub binder. Now this is one of a couple videos that are going to be coming because there is so much to cover when it comes to sub plans that I cannot fit it into one video. But I did want to start with the sub binder because this is your foundation. Think of your sub plans like a cupcake. This is the actual cake part. You can't have the frosting or the sprinkles unless you have the cake. So I'm going to be going through my sub binder, talk through what you need to have in it, and I even have a template for you. As I walk you through my sub binder, you can totally recreate this on your own in a word processor or Google Slides or PowerPoint, but to make it easier for you, I do have a template. It already has the formatting all ready to go, so you just have to type in your own information. It is available both in a PowerPoint format and a Google Slides format, so you can pick and choose which one you would prefer. I use Google Slides because it makes it really easy year to year to just quickly change out the information or even within the year I can quickly make any changes reprint it and I'm ready to go so as you're watching this if you really like the format of my sub binder you can use the link in the description box to go grab my editable sub binder template but as an added bonus I do also have a freebie for you all the pages I'm gonna show you in this video I actually have compiled into a PDF which you can go download for free that way you can use my sub binder as a sample when you create yours. Obviously, I've put in a lot of fake information, like these are not actual teachers in my school or actual students, but you can use my wording and things as a foundation to help you write your own sub binder. If you wanna download that freebie, just follow the link down in the description box. So let's jump right into it. The very first step in creating your sub binder is to get a binder, okay? I have used folders, but I find it easier to use a binder because it just makes it easier to change out the pages throughout the year because guess what when you create your sub binder at the beginning of the year you're going to have to change it throughout the year you're gonna have students leave your class you're gonna have students come to your class some of your routines or procedures might change so know that when you create a sub binder it's going to make your life much easier because when you do make those changes you only have to change out a couple of things reprint it and then pop it into the binder now I also use page protectors within the binder just because it keeps my pages from getting crinkled or folded and it just makes it last longer and that way when I print out those new pages I can just take out the previous page from the page protector and slip the new one in. I personally do not use dividers within my sub binder. I feel like I don't have enough pages to require dividers but that's definitely an option for you if you want to keep it just a little bit more organized. Now let's talk about the actual pages inside the sub binder. The first page you should include is a welcome letter to the substitute. Within your welcome letter, you do want to start by thanking your substitute for taking care of your class. You want to let them know any people to contact in case they're having difficulties with your sub plans. You want to let them know any important information such as if your kids are going to be switching classes. And then finally, you want to remind them to fill out a sub report at the end of the day to let you know how things went. I personally just chunk the information into paragraphs and it's written in a letter format. I sign my name at the end and I'm good to go. The next page should be contact information because this is a page that if they're opening your sub binder and they're having difficulties, they're gonna need to know who to contact. One of the first things I always include on this page is instructions for using the phone because phones can have different ways to call extensions or different ways to call outside 
website numbers, so I always make sure I include that information at the top of the page. Then I break down my contacts into categories. I have team teachers, front office, special areas, and other. For my team teachers, I just list their name, their room number, and their extension. For the front office staff, I always include the secretary along with administration. For the special areas, I will list the art teacher and the PE teacher and the music teacher or any other teachers that may fall in that category. And under other, I will always list the nurse and the custodian because those are two must haves. And then I will list any other staff members that I think the substitute may need to contact, such as special education or a speech teacher. You might also want to include a copy of your full phone extension list in your sub binder behind this page. That way, just in case, if they need to get in contact with someone you have not listed, they can find them on that extension list. The next page of your sub binder is for schedules. Obviously, you want to have a list of your average daily schedule, and you want to include both times and a description of what you're doing at that time. But you also may want to include schedules for delayed openings or early dismissals. Even though you may not plan to be out on a day when those schedules occur, it's always good to have in the binder just in case. I always include a little sentence telling the substitute to check with my team teachers because even though we have a set schedule for early dismissal days or for delay days, depending on the circumstances, it might have to change. And then finally, I have a schedule for my specials because my students do go to different specials on different days. The next page is for rosters. This is a non-negotiable. You need to have a student roster in your sub binder. And if you teach multiple classes of students, you need to include each roster. You could choose to put each roster on a separate page. Personally, I have three different groups of students and I actually put them all on a single page along with directions for taking attendance in the morning. Don't forget to label which roster is for which class so that there is no confusion. You could even put the time that you teach that class right on the roster just to help clarify. The next page is a dismissal list. I personally like to put this right after the student roster. That way all of the student information is in one place. Obviously, this is geared toward elementary school, so depending on what grades you teach, this may not be applicable to you, but personally, I list the mode of transportation for each of my students, and I will even go as far as including the specific bus number, or if they have one mode of transportation on one day of the week and a separate mode of transportation on the other days of the week. Now, if you are responsible for taking a certain group of students out for dismissal, you would also want to include that. I personally take out walkers, so I would also include a list of all of the walkers that I have from the entire grade level. The next pages are for seating charts. Now, if you do not have assigned seats, obviously you don't need to include this, but personally my students do have assigned seats in each of my classes, so I make sure I include a seating chart for each of my classes. Not only is this helpful to keep your students honest and make sure they're sitting where they're supposed to be sitting, but it also is helpful for the substitute so they can get to know the students based on where their seat is. If you are able to, you could even add in student pictures on the seating chart. That way the substitute can quickly identify the student and their name. If you have seating charts for other areas, such as your carpet or the computer lab, you would also want to include those. And you may even want to put the date that that seating chart was last updated. That way the substitute knows if it's current or not. The next page is for student information. Now this page includes a lot of different student information and you can choose whether to organize it by specific student or by category of information such as health and intervention. I always make sure I include a list of helpful and reliable students. That way if the substitute is having any difficulty, he or she can ask those students for help. I also make sure I list any student allergies or students who may need to go to the nurse at a specific time to get medication. But again, you might wanna check with your school and figure out what you're supposed to include in your sub binder or not supposed to include in your sub binder for student confidentiality reasons because it does vary from district to district. You also want to include any accommodations or modifications that students receive through an IEP or 504 plan. And you want to include any students who leave the room for intervention or or pull out, you want to make sure you list the time that they are leaving and maybe even list the teacher that they are being pulled out by. Finally, you would want to include any special student privileges. Maybe a student is able to use a fidget or their students who stay at their seats instead of coming to the carpet. You want to make sure you let the substitute know that 
information so they can keep your routines and procedures as consistent as possible. If you do choose to organize this information by student rather than category, again, you could consider adding in student pictures just to help clarify for the sub. The next page is for student behavior. It is super important that you communicate your expectations for behavior along with any rewards or consequences that you use. Again, you want the substitute to try to keep things as consistent as possible. I always like to include a list of my classroom rules along with management strategies that the substitute can use and rewards and consequences that the substitute can utilize. Now, if you're going to have the substitute use a specific incentive system, maybe you designed a poster and you draw a donut and every time the students are behaving he or she can add a sprinkle to the donut make sure you put those directions directly on this page so that the substitute can reference it and knows what he or she is supposed to do also if you mention a specific consequence such as a problem solving sheet which is what I use make sure you include copies of that in the sub binder as well so that they have them handy the next few pages are for procedures you want to make sure you outline for the substitute exactly how you handle different transitions throughout your day or different activities. That way the substitute can keep things as consistent as possible. I've used that word a lot, but honestly, when you are away from your classroom, consistency is key. We all know that some students do not adapt well to changes, so you want the substitute to be able to keep things as consistent as possible. Now within these procedures, you do want to include time frames. That way the substitute knows exactly when this procedure should be taking place. I always include a description of my morning and arrival procedures along with my dismissal procedures because those can vary so much from school to school. Then I include procedures for lunch, indoor recess, and outdoor recess. And I also explain how the substitute will know whether it's indoor recess or outdoor recess. If your students also get a snack, you would want to include those procedures as well. Finally, I include procedures for assemblies because even though I may include that in my actual sub plans, which will be coming in the next video, I do want to have it in the sub binder in case I have to be out unexpectedly and there's an assembly that I didn't plan for. Finally, I do include procedures for transitions and I kind of explain how I expect my students to transition from class to class when they enter the hallway. The next page is for management. This is where I explain how I handle things like the bathroom and getting a drink and if I have flexible seating, I want to make sure I explain to the substitute how I manage the flexible seating in my classroom. It's also helpful if you give the substitute some attention getters that your students are already familiar with. I do know some substitutes will actually teach the students attention getters, which is great, but I do think it's helpful if they already have a list of one or two that the students are familiar of. That way they can utilize it throughout the day. If you utilize specific hand signals in your classroom, you wanna make sure you explain that to the substitute as well so he or she is not confused when kids are holding up their hands with fingers or different signs in order to ask for things in the classroom. The next page is for supplies. Now, you can choose to organize this by the category of supplies, or you can choose to organize it by teacher supplies and student supplies. Even though you're gonna pull out materials for the lesson, again, you never know when you could be out unexpectedly, so it's super helpful if you let the substitute know where to find different supplies in your classroom. Under teacher supplies, I always make sure I let the substitute know where to find just general office supplies, things like pens and paper clips and tape and staples, and I also let them know that they are free to use my refrigerator and microwave if they need to. Under student supplies, I make sure the substitute knows where to find their crayons and glue and scissors, but I also let them know where to find different manipulatives that we may use for subject areas such as math. In the other category, I always make sure I let the substitute know where bandages are, along with paper and extra supplies, so if students do run out of crayons or pencils or scissors, they know where to find those things. I also include where to find tissues, hand sanitizer, and wet wipes because those come in handy, especially this time of year when everyone is sick. And then I let them know things like clipboards or dry erase boards. That way they have everything they could possibly need for the lesson. The next page is on technology information. Now you may choose not to have the substitute use any technology, but personally, I think it makes our lives a lot easier. I actually will leave a slideshow for the substitute to use to help guide their 
another day. That is also coming in a future video. But because of that, I want to make sure I give directions on how to use the different technologies that I have in my classroom. I always give directions on how to use my computer. I do sign out so the substitute does not have access to any of my things. And our substitutes are given a sub login when they get to school. I also include directions on using the projector and the document camera. And then we have a fourth grade Chromebook cart that we split up throughout the day. So I always make sure I give directions on where to access the Chromebooks and which students are responsible for getting them and returning them at the end of the day. If you have a smart board, you might also want to include directions for using that along with laptops or iPads or tablets. And you might also want to include contact information for who to ask questions, whether it's a team teacher or if you have a tech coach in your school, leave their name and contact information. That way the substitute can get in contact with them if needed. Now I choose to organize this page by the actual technology, but you could also organize it by teacher technology and student technology. My final page is emergency information. And I know some of you are probably thinking, Michelle, that should go at the front of your binder. But I find it useful to actually put it at the very back. And I will put like a red sticky tab on it. That way the substitute can find it quickly. But if I put it in the front, but it's like one or two pages back, it gets tricky to find. If it's the very last page, they can flip directly to it and find it when needed. This is where you want to give the substitute directions for any types of drill drills that may occur such as fire drills, tornado drills, shelter in place, lockdowns, but you also want to include what to do if it's not a drill and it's actually an emergency. Do they need to take a specific bag with them or do they need to take your sub binder with them? Make sure you give them that information. If your school utilizes maps for emergency routes, meaning your class is supposed to go out a certain way so that students aren't all rushing to the same door, you would want to include copies of those maps directly in your sub binder. The final thing you should include in your sub binder actually goes in the very front. I keep mine in the front pocket. That way when the substitute opens the binder, it's one of the first things they see. And that is a sub report. I know some subs will actually write a note on just a piece of paper, but I find it helpful to give them a form to fill out. That way I make sure I get all the information I need. On this form, I do ask for the substitute's name, the date that they subbed, and I give them the option to leave their contact information. Personally, in my county, we have a huge sub shortage. So when I find a sub who is actually really good, I wanna make sure I get their contact information and I can contact them in the future if I need a substitute. I also leave a spot for the substitute to write the names of absent students. That way I know who missed the lesson and will need to get caught up when I return. I also leave a spot for the substitute to rate my students' behavior. I find it easiest if they can just rate it on a scale of one to five. And then I do have a spot for additional comments and notes at the bottom so they could elaborate if needed. I do also leave a spot for the substitute to list any students who really went above and beyond because I want to make sure that I commend them when I return along with a spot for students who needed redirection. Now, every teacher handles things differently, but personally, I don't give students consequences for misbehaving when I'm gone because I wasn't there to actually witness the behavior and students do react different to different personalities. It could be that that student just had a bad day or maybe they don't adjust well to change. I don't know because I wasn't there, but I do wanna know the names of those students. That way I know how to better prepare them the next time that I may be out. So that is everything I include in my substitute binder. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, give the video a thumbs thumbs up. Don't forget if you want to purchase my substitute binder template, it is editable, PowerPoint version and Google Slides version. They all come together. You can follow the link in the description box to download it. I promise it will make your life much easier. And you can also download the freebie sample of my substitute binder. So as you create your own, you can kind of use mine to help you. That link is also in the description box. Next week, I will have a video outlining how to actually write sub plans. Those are your plans where you give directions on the actual lessons and the instruction. And the week after that, I will actually have a video on how to create slides for subs if you choose to leave those. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.
Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher store, my merchandise store, and my Amazon store are in the description box, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.